Well, this next mystery is much closer to home. Did Bonnie and Clyde rob a southwestern Minnesota bank? In this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lordson shows us how a 90-year-old debate over the famous bank robber still captivates the small town of Okabina. And people are friendly and they, you know, take care of each other. Okabina is a quiet little farm town, but that doesn't mean it lacks for colorful characters. The whole thing is exciting because, you know, you're going through the process of going down the street and people shooting at you. Dewey and Cheryl Leopold are this area's version of Bonnie and Clyde. They are reenactors. The boots I think I got at a garage sale. Who used to play America's most famous crime couple during Okabina's 4th of July parade. It was fun, but it was so strange to come in to rob a bank. You know, you really felt guilty. I did. I thought, this is weird. This is the gun you use to rob the bank. Yes, absolutely. A lot of the robbers use these guns. Yeah. And it, it shoots uh, nine millimeter blanks, so it's not a real gun. The reenactment was based on an actual robbery that happened in May of 1933. The thieves hid inside First Aid Bank the night before and surprised employees in the morning. Well, to me, it's very interesting and uh, to have it happen so close to your hometown. During their escape, the robbers got into a shootout with the hardware store owner next door before making off with $1,400. But it wasn't Bonnie and Clyde who were later arrested. It was the Strain Gang. When I was young, the movie Bonnie and Clyde was a favorite of mine, and that's how I knew about the legend. Brad Chisholm is a film studies professor at St. Cloud State. He spent three years studying the Okabina robbery, and he's convinced that Tony Floyd and Mildred Strain were framed, and that Bonnie and Clyde were the real thieves. I just got kind of hooked by the controversy because there were people who were just adamant, this is not a Bonnie and Clyde robbery, that's an exotic romantic notion. Um, others that insisted, yes, that was Bonnie and Clyde. Chisholm says his research turned up evidence to exonerate the strains. Mildred was named as the getaway driver, but Chisholm says she never learned to drive. We know Mildred was framed because I've got, I've got a letter actually that, that admits that. And later in life, Blanche Barrow, who ran with Bonnie and Clyde, wrote a memoir talking about witnessing a major hailstorm right before committing a small town robbery. And you look at the weather report for uh, that day, um, the, the morning before May 19th, 1933, big hailstorm in Okabina, Minnesota. It's a debate that's gone on now for 91 years and counting. Most of the town continues to embrace and even celebrate the Bonnie and Clyde notoriety. And people just think it's the greatest thing. Nicole Cruz also grew up surrounded by Bonnie and Clyde folklore. I don't want to accuse you of false advertising, but I'm a little skeptical this was the Bonnie and Clyde getaway well, car. No, 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 this is uh, two cars put together. One of them is a 1930 Ford that was once used for hunting coyotes in Nebraska. Now it sits in front of the old creamery, the symbol of a classic who done it. We've had people stop, take pictures or take family pictures. Um, we have a lot of people come and take high school graduation pictures. In Okabina, John Lordson, WCCO News. Chisholm says there's also evidence Clyde Barrow and a friend scoped out the bank a year before that robbery took place.